<sighs> Always something. Always something. Right? <clears throat> what a feeling! All right, here we go. Welcome back, guys, on today's show. A dog eats a man's toe and saves his life. And this week in snakes. And what, what is the penny policy? And don't call this a boat. It's a cruise ship. Or don't call this cruise ship a boat. Let's do it that one. All right. Don't call this cruise ship a boat. All this and much, much more will be discussed here on Deacon Live as we go through the next 60 minutes or so and comb through all the social news, viral videos, and stuff you might have missed over the last seven days or so. How are you? How are things? How are things going? Are you getting along with everyone? Are you having a good time? Let's put it that way. Are you having a good time? Doing all right? Uh, the weather's changed a little bit out there, at least here in the Carolinas. Now, we broadcast just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a little town we like to call Marshville, population 2,500 people. In a two square mile radius, we sit on about 22 some odd acres. We have horses, chickens, dogs, cats, goats, skunks, and army worms. Army worms have taken over North Carolina. If you don't know what they are, look them up. Uh, they've been eating the grass, all the long sweated tears and stuff as far as uh, getting the grass and everything ready for spring and fall. And, and now they've gone through and eaten up most of our pastures and stuff. So we have to start from scratch but that's neither here there nor there. Something I do have to start from scratch on now is if you're looking at me here on the YouTube video and every podcast, we also have a YouTube video so you can follow along when we talk about articles here on the show. If there's any video videos or vi uh, visual imaging that you can watch as we're, we're talking about it. You can find us over on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe over there. Uh, it's not a money grab or anything. It's just another media source for you guys to enjoy the show. And if you're looking at us here in the studio, and I got to get my bearings here. I hate that word anyways. If you look right here, that is a the inside part of a split unit. Now, a split unit, AC unit, or uh, I think that's what they call them, split units. The handler and everything's outside, but then the vent and everything's all inside. Well, over the last month or so, it's been slowly, slowly dying. Slowly, slowly, not, it's still blowing cold, but it's not like as cold. It's like, you know, when you're 16, you can sit there and, you know, hold your breath all day long at the bottom of the pool. But when you get older, you can barely hold your breath just to sit on the toilet. So it's, it's doing all right, but you know, this is an 800 square foot studio. Um, you only see one side of the camera. I do other shows in here and we take up the whole, you know, we have guests and stuff and that takes up the other side of the studio. Um, so we have to keep this whole building, uh, it, you know, comfortable AC condition wise, uh, while it's taken a dump and I've had to retreat to this whole, this whole ordeal as far as either getting a, another split unit. I think we only paid like 600 bucks for that one and I installed it and then I had to pay another 400 bucks for the guy to come back and fix what I messed up. Um, and I got, we got online. It's like a Pioneer or some off brand or something like that. And, and now I look at the same unit. That it's like 750. So buy another one. Deacon, why don't you just buy another one, you big baller? Sitting on 22 some odd acres and, and you know, $100,000 truck that you just bought and everything. <laughs> well, it's not that simple. I have to pull the other one out and then stick the other one back in. I know that sounds weird, but that's what's happening. I don't want to spend right now. We're at the almost, what is this, August? I got five more months left before, you know, the new year. And then I get a new budget. I don't want to spend $700, $800 on a new unit and put it in there. So I'm like, okay, so let me get one of those little R2D2 units. Cause we have one on our bedroom. And when I say R2D2 units, it looks like R2D2 and it's got a little exhaust, a little four inch hose that you put out the window and it, you know, it breathes out the window and that way all the exhaust goes outside and then it cools the inside. We've had this one, this LG one for God knows, I don't know, more than 15 years. It works great and we keep it in the bedroom. So we're not heating or cooling our whole entire, you know, 3000 square foot house. I know baller, right? Spend the 700 bucks. So we keep our bedroom cool at night. That way the AC in the house sits at around, I think 77 
we're not on that side of the house. We just care about the bedroom. And our bedroom's like nice, cool 62 degrees. And it's awesome. So I said to my wife, I'm like, well, what do we do? And of course, this is the end of air conditioning season. So I'm like, well, they're not going to have them all bulked out. And the prices are going to suck. So I went and saw one. It was like 350 bucks, And it's like, oh, I don't want to spend 350 bucks. Can I find one for 100 bucks? Can I? Can I find one for 100 bucks? Then my wife goes, you know what? I hate that that R2D unit in our bedroom. Why don't we just get a small little AC unit for the window? Ghetto, by the way. And we have this huge bush. We can hide it on that window, the window that's behind that bush. No one will see it. No one will see it from the road. No one will see it from the driveway. Nothing. I said, okay. So I'm buying an AC unit for the bedroom window and then bringing the R2D2 guy up here. So I'm looking for just a basic AC window for our bedroom. Now our bedroom's 20 by 25, somewhere around there. I know, <laughs> again, Paula, right? <laughs> you can play tennis in here. And I'm like, ah, oh, so how many square feet is that? I'm like, it's 450 square feet. And I'm looking at, you're basically paying a dollar per square foot for an AC unit. Oh, one that does 450 uh, square feet, that's $500. I'm like, God damn it, can I get around this shit? She's like, well, what if we close the bathroom off? You know, we don't have the have the bathroom open. We can close the bathroom off. I said, okay, good. Now we're down to 250 square feet. You've got a 250 square foot bathroom? Yes, we do. <laughs> Shut up. So now we've got this window unit that's in the bedroom, and it's keeping the bedroom cool. First night was all right. Second night was better. Uh, we have to learn to close the bathroom door. And when I say bathroom door, like, yeah, we do have a big, huge walk-in bathroom. It's, it's huge. It's huge. It's the biggest bathroom I've ever seen. And I brought the R2D unit up, R2D unit up here, and so now I'm dealing with the exhaust and trying to figure out how to exhaust it out of this room because there's no windows in this room. It's just a door. That door behind me is the only way in and the only way out. Um, and we've got you know that side of the room. There's no windows up here. Um, this is a three car garage, and above it, this is a, not an attic, but it's a it's a room six eight, six eight hundred square foot room. You know, it's finished, it's wired, electric and stuff, just no AC unit. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. So that's my trials and tribulations of what's been going on with me. And now that you're up to date on that, I know everyone's going to be all right and be happy. So now we can get into the fun stuff. And when we come back, have you heard about the penny policy? We used to have it uh, when I worked at Home Depot many, many, many years ago. And right now, I guess people are, are finding the penny policy at their local Dollar General. And they're taking advantage of it. I'll dive into what the, all that means when we come back. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want to be famous? Well, we want you to be famous. And you can be famous along with us right here in the studio. And the way you do that is go over... Profit Radio. Go over to ProfitRadio.com. Proud sponsors of Deacon Live and all the other fine broadcasting that comes out of the studio. And uh, at the top of the page says, uh, leave a message for Deacon Live. Uh, real simple. Hit record, listen back, and then send it. You can be anonymous if you want, and it'll come right into our inbox, and we'll play it on this podcast. And we broadcast every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you get it in soon enough, we'll play it on this podcast. If not, we'll play it on the very next podcast as well. Now, don't forget, we have over, well, our, our back catalog goes back to 2017. But we've been doing this for over 10 years now. So there's, I think, uh, maybe 150 shows that aren't uh, available anymore. But still, 2017. You can listen back to all those shows and all the different people we've had on the show on different guests and different topics and everything. And they're not like... Um, time sensitive type deal we talk about anything that you could talk about on any given day so you're welcome to go back and listen to all that and if you want to ask me a question or anything uh you can send it to us by going to the profit radio website and uh leave us a message it comes right to our inbox and give me some kind of like marker you know wh what show did you listen to what did you mean when you said this uh you're absolutely wrong on that or absolutely right usually i'm wrong on stuff which is no shocker because i make up a lot of shit as the day goes on now Right now, check all check your pockets, check your couches uh, for any loose change because there is a quarter out there right now, 25 cent piece is in circulation that is worth over $5 million. And here's how to find it. Every day, millions of coins and bills change hands across the United States, most of them holding their face value. However, certain pieces can be worth significant, significantly more, fetching thousands if not millions from eager collectors. Uh, according to the U.S. First Exchange Portal, the value of the coin or pr 
or the bill is primarily determined by three factors. Rarity, condition, and grade, and the market demand. The interplay of these factors can uh, transform the seemingly ordinary coin or bill to a prized possession worth far more than face value. Among these treasures is a 25, uh, 25 cent coin making its waves in the market, the collector's market for a staggering, a staggering potential value. So what's happened is one such coin of a, is a rare is a rare coin with George Washington's by cent. Oh, come on. These ads make the screens pop up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, there's a George Washington bicentennial quarter that stands out only for its historical significance, but also because of its, its design. Uh, the obverse side of the coin features a bust of George Washington accompanied by the inscriptions, Liberty, in God we trust. Crut <laughs> and try and God would crush <laughs> the du and the dual dates 1776 and 1976 are bicentennial. The reverse case, uh, the, the reverse side showcases the inscriptions on the, on the reverse included the United States of America, uh, E Plubus Unum. I believe that's how you pronounce that. I know <laughs> my Latin is not as good as it used to be, uh, and and the quarter dollar as on the reverse side. These designs elements alone make the coin a collectible. There is also a particular variant that elevates this value to an extraordinary value. I remember in, in uh, elementary school, kids used to uh, save those bicentennial coins all the time. And I'm like going, dude, you, you know how many video games you can play with that, man? <laughs> how about a quarter? No, not my bicentennial quarter. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see. So many pop-up ads. It's bumped the ad up and bumped that ad down. So here we go. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. What sets this 25 cent uh, coin apart from its rare minting error? What's the error? Oh, because of its minting error. During production, the die used stamp, the die used to stamp the coin's design was misaligned, resulting in a double struck obverse. The feature highly prized, which is a feature highly prized by collectors, according to experts from the Hill County Country Weekly. This error not only makes the coin unique, but also try, or ties it to a historical content of the bicentennial celebration. Uh, adding to this allure, despite the millions of bicentennial coins minted, only a few of them have a double struck error, making them a very rare find. This rarity, coupled with a historical significance, has driven up its value to a staggering five million dollars. And so, why are collectors eager to get this coin? The combination of the history. Uh, historical content, unique design, and rare minting area makes this George Washington bicentennial coin uh, the coveted amongst all collectors. So check your pockets, check your um, your uh, your coin jar, your cuss jar, your swear jar, whatever you call it, like that, and see if you've got a bicentennial coin. One that's worth a little bit more than a regular quarter. Let's see how much a normal bicentennial quarter worth is worth. How much is a bicentennial? quarter worth just a regular bicentennial quarter is worth uh, $75 I got one here on eBay a rare, a rare a bicentennial quarter rare 1776 1770 I'm sorry 1776 1976 no mint with drum error on the reverse and the ups oh so there's a drum error on there I see that that's why it's $75 but look at your uh, bicentennial ones and if you're not not familiar with it look it up online and uh, maybe uh, me and you can split. All, all I want is ten percent. Ten percent. Now, many years ago, as a as a a young lad leaving high school, I got a job at Home Depot. It was in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm good with my hands as far as like tools and building stuff, and and just kind of being a people person. Not like now. <laughs> Everybody hates me now. Uh, but I used to work for Home Depot. And let me give you a little insight as far as Home Depot. Well, well, let's 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 dive into this article first before I give you the insight on Home Depot. I know, teaser, teaser, teaser. Pinching pennies, Dollar General shoppers com 
confused that their employees refused to honor the penny policy and blame customers for taking advantage of the penny policy at the Dollar General. However, some customers are trying to secure the bargain buys have run into some problems with the employees. The Dollar General is a popular thrifty sh for thrifty shoppers thrifty for shoppers for its low prices prices ranges anywhere between one dollar to ten dollar i think dollar general in my own opinion is a ripoff because they have like cans of soup and it says not, you know one dollar but those cans of soup like at walmart or something like that are like 67 cents i'm like going well there's your problem <laughs> some items are some items called penny items will ring up for one cent at the discount chain these items are mistakes according to the crazy coupon lady but have been marked down for one cent so the Dollar General employees know when to remove them from the shelves. However, the products have already been, been heavily discounted, typically over by 90%, and the discount change is having trouble selling the inventory. The penny items are supposed to be removed from the shelf or from the sales floor uh, and sold out as close to a closeout store such as Big Big Lots. So you want to know what happens to the stuff at Dollar General? It's at Big Lots. Hold on, I'm going to do something. Sorry, I had to do some. Uh, I was like, something's not feeling right. Oh, I still have my shoes on. If, for those of you who don't know, I, I take my shoes off when I do the show. So I either have like bare feet or my socks on the carpet here. I just can't wear the shoes. That makes my feet hot. My feet sweat. <laughs> I know, side note there. Back to the story. Dollar General shopper Lori uh, Duran uh, came across a penny item at her local store but was refused by the employees. I had my first refusal day to... Uh, of someone trying to sell pe penny items. The customer wrote in a Dollar General Penny Shopper Facebook group. Of course, of course. Um, I pulled out the <clears throat> I, I pulled out the penny policy and was told that I can't believe anything you read online. Uh, they wanted to up the price of this items. Store managers claimed that chimed in and offered the insight into the penny items. She explained that Dollar General typically typically sells customer penny items if they manage to find them on the shelves. You can have it if you find it. Finders keepers, losers weepers. Uh, however, she clarified that selling items was a significant was slightly problematic. Pro, problem mm, like my speech. Problem prob, problematic. Problematic. Let's go with that one. <clears throat> oh Jesus. Hello? Y yeah, I'm working though now. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. Bye. Bye. All right, where did I leave off? <laughs> it's the, the hazards of owning a, a property and where you sell eggs. So back to my... um. As I, what I started the conversation with was uh, I worked for Home Depot for many years. And when they, Dollar General talks about the penny, <clears throat> the penny, if you find it on the shelf, Home Depot, to give you an idea, if it ends in a zero, ends in a nine, it's, it's good to go. If it ends in a six, that means it's got six more weeks before it goes down to zero or one penny. So if you see a price like uh, $10 and 16 cents, you got six weeks, and then it'll give you another countdown. It'll say $10.13, which means the three means it's got three more weeks left on it. And then you'll see uh, it'll go down to basically a penny. So what we used to do back in the day, if we found something that was going to be discounted, we'd hide it somewhere on the shelf somewhere and wait for it to go down to the three-week three, three week thing because it was like completely discounted for like 90% off. Uh, and we were not allowed to buy anything that was a penny off. And, you know, they run into reports. We run reports of what the, all the penny items are in the store for that day. And you physically have to go around, find them, and, or mark zero or change the inventory or stuff. So uh, that's what's out there. So that's the penny policy out there. When we come back, this guy, these kids uh, were caught pool squatting. And someone got injured and tried to sue the homeowner. And do you think that's fair for them doing that? And I'll dive into the actual details of all that when we come back. So stick around. You'll listen to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. You want something for free? Well, we will give you something for free. But what you have to do 
to get it is go over to ProfitRadio.com, proud sponsors of Deacon Live and all the other fine pro, uh, programming that comes out of the studio. Uh, while you're over at Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T Radio.com, you can leave us a message over there and pick your out something over at the free swag section. You can see all the different items that you can get. It's just their way of saying thank you. It's not an email grab or anything, so don't worry. For everyone here in the United States, they usually ship it out uh, within 48 hours of you putting your order in, and uh, it's free. Don't worry. And uh, we'll pay for all, or they pay for all the shipping and everything. Uh, but if you're overseas, it might take a little bit longer to get to you, but it will eventually get there. You know, it's got to go across the ocean in a bottle somewhere. <laughs> we throw it in there and, and have it run out. Now, I have this saying in my mind, and I tell my wife and some of my close friends, my body cannot keep one meal in it at any given time. So what does that mean? I know this is getting kind of disgusting here. So if I have breakfast, I'm fine. But if I have breakfast and I had a big meal from the night before, something's, something's got to change. Something's got to make room for the other one. And then if I have lunch, eventually within 30 minutes of me having lunch, something I can only keep one meal at me in me at any given time. So that <laughs> does that make sense? Did I define that to you? Well, what they call that is actually it's a disease, not a disease like, you know, I've got AIDS or anything like that, but it's, it's a mental, uh, not disorder. It's a mental thing that you go through. Doctors have revealed what could be happening to your body. If you feel like you need to poo immediately after eating, there seems to be a, a lot of evidence surrounding your bowel movements. However, we should be going and what normal looks like, et cetera, et cetera. So there's now a new revelation that could be happening. If you feel the urge to go right after eating an experience, I'd imagine, all of us that share throughout the course of our life. Of course, here are more ads. Uh, Joseph Sal Sahib recently shared on TikTok that needing to go to the bathroom, going to the bathroom or loo instantly after eating doesn't necessarily mean you have something wrong with you, such as irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, uh, but it could be as simply as your brain function. Oh, great. So <laughs> my brain function is completely shut. He noted that it's not because it's not because move uh, food is moving instantly through your GI tract, as many of us would first assume. Instead, he claims that the process involves signals to your brain. The video states, "I want to I see the video. Let's see the video." So here he is. Let's let's hear it from the horse's mouth. So here's the video, and I'm going to switch to camera four so you can see this, and we can all be friends. So here we go. This is Dr. Joseph Salib Salib, and let's see what he has to say about uh, poop moving through your system. Here we go. Do you have to poop immediately after you eat? If this happens to you, you're not alone. Well, it's not because food is moving instantly throughout your GI tract. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist, so if you find these tips helpful, hit that follow button. When you eat and you feel like you have to use the restroom right after, there's something called the gastrocolic reflex. And he's got the stethoscope around his neck, so you know he's a doctor. <laughs> and he's got a sports car with red seats, so you know he's a doctor. <laughs> what this means is that when food enters your stomach, your stomach stretches, and this sends signals to your brain which then sends signals to your colon, begins to contract to make more room for the food. And that reflex makes you feel like you have to use the restroom right after you eat. Because your colon normally houses stool and water, the stuff that's actually coming out is old digested food and water. We think that people with IBS have a heightened sensitivity to this reflex, which is why certain people after they eat get really bad abdominal pain, cramping, and even diarrhea. Because the contractions of the colon can be very powerful and very forceful. Yes. If this causes a problem for you. Some of the things that you can do to help this include adhering to something called a low FODMAP diet, which can give you a list of foods. FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-M-A-P or whatever. That may be causing your problems and try to avoid them. Other things that you can try to avoid include things like carbonated beverages, high sugary drinks, check, check. alcohol, Certain nah. citrus foods can sometimes dairy as well eh. and fried or fatty foods check but everyone's different there's no blanket recommendations on foods you should include or exclude you're just going to have to try to keep a journal of foods that you know make things worse and try to mix and match and eliminate foods and then reintroduce them see if this can help your symptoms thanks doc <laughs> i feel better now <laughs> but so yeah, so I mean, you know, I've been taking, I know I hate to say this, I've been actually uh, been taking uh, Metamucil just to kind of, I know, well, how old are you? <laughs> no, believe it or not, it actually tastes quite good. It's it's good. Uh, does it make me move? It makes me poop, uh, not poop, but toot a little bit more. Toot, toot. <laughs> but other than that, uh, it keeps me regular. I'm, I'm, I can do that. I can do what I want. You, do, you guys do what you want, and I'll do what I want. Speaking of uh, squatting, uh, these squatters, uh, broke into a French apartments complex 
a French apartment complex. And he, they be, <laughs> let me figure this out here. A man who broke into a French apartment complex became paralyzed after diving into a swimming pool is now suing the property owners for damages. Yes, I know. You thought it would only happen here in America? This also happened over in the wee oui, wee, oui, the French area. At the time, uh, at the time, he was 18 years old. A man was part of a group of friends who were quote unquote pool squatting at a private res residential apartment block in Toulouse in 2022. As a result of the accident from diving, a uh, dive gone wrong, he broke his back and became paralyzed from the neck down. I actually, speaking of Home Depot, I worked with a guy who was in a wheelchair. He could barely move his hands. He had like those, like uh, MS hands where he couldn't move his fingers and stuff. Barely. And I said, what happened? He was in a wheelchair. And I said, what happened? He goes, I dived in a pool at a young age. I was like, oh, shit. Pool squatting has become increasingly popular during hot summer months in, in southern France. Typically involves young people illegally crossing into strangers' pools. One witness had identified La Depeche de Lo Copepa as Anthony said he remembered that a young man and his friends were jumping around like idiots before the accident. Uh, we tell them they would they would go and get hurt, and it and it happened. He said. Uh, two years after the incident, the squatters decided to take Credidel a cooker home in my lumbar, the apartment manager company, <laughs> to the court last month uh, and started the process of stewing, suing for negligence. The situation is dramatic. One of the property owners, co-owners, identified as Alexandra, told French news uh, channel IFB, nevertheless, it's not our fault. She said the owners have... Uh, told the young people to leave the property and that the sign posted at the entrance clearly indicated the pool pool depths for swimmers at 3.5 feet. Oh, why didn't they do meters? Why why didn't they do meters? <laughs> Don't they do meters in France? And at the shallow end, and it's seven feet deep, seven feet at the deep end. We were completely at a loss and we feel that the young man was hurt himself and shattered his life at the age of 18, but he knew not to jump there and had no business being there, Alexandra told. Uh, the Le Depeche newspaper. So, I mean, I, you know, I've heard of that before. What camera are we on? You know what I mean? Uh, I've heard of that before where technically, here, here's the thing. Like here in the United States, you're like, oh, I'm going to booby trap my yard. So if, it, you know, someone gets, you know, tries to rob me or something like that, kind of like um, a Home Alone style. Well, you they have, I hate to say it, a right of not being hurt if they enter your property. So if someone enters your property, illegally or trespassing or something like that and they get hurt they could technically sue you which sucks uh unless you have cameras or something you can prove that this was you know legitimately legitimately uh an incident that they did on their own like you know slip and fall ah oh, i slipped on your on your driveway and you can see they didn't really slip on the driveway but if they get hit on your hurt on your property you can't do that and these guys broke in illegally and we're pool squatting, and then this guy broke his neck, and they're like, oh, you should have, you know, had better signs or taller or drain the pool or something like that. So it not only does it happen here, it help, happens elsewhere as well. Now, when we come back, this week in snakes, and what are we going to learn about this week in snakes? Well, we're going to learn about how you can tell if you got one hiding behind the walls, and if they are hiding behind the walls, watch your balls. And I'll, I'll get into all the details of that story when we come back. So stick on. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Make sure you follow us on all your social networks. And the way you do that is go over to ProfitRadio.com. Proud sponsors of Deacon Live. And you can see the space that says, a uh, little drop-down menu says social contacts. You can see all the stuff that links us to you and you to us as well. And uh, if you have any questions for me, you can uh, find us over there on Facebook. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are or X or whatever the fuck it's called. And uh, TikTok. And all the other different platforms where you can, if you're watching the video, uh, wherever you're located at, you can find us on your uh other streaming platforms, uh, iHeartRadio, which pays the bills here, Spotify, iTunes, and all the other different uh, pod catchers that are out there. So make sure you go over there and check us out as well. Now, if you have an email, if you want to email for anything, any questions or anything, that's deacon at profitradio.com. You can find that email address over there as well. Now, this week in snakes. Here in on our property, uh, here in Charlotte, North Carolina, we don't have a whole lot of snakes uh, just due to the weather. Uh, it does get warm outside. We we are, we, I guess we are known in this area to have like copperheads or something like that. But for the most part, we really don't have a whole lot of snakes. The one snake that we do have, which I feel bad because I killed it like the first day. I'm like, ah, oh, it's a bad snake. 
is a king snake. And now every time I, I see a king snake, I'm like, you're the best snake in the whole world. Why? First of all, king snake's not poisonous. Second of all, king snakes eat all poisonous snakes. And, you know, your coral, your copperhead, your cotton mouth. We don't have cotton mouths up here. But all the other bad snakes, the king cobra or king cobra, the king snake is absolutely immune to all those poisons and will eat those snakes all up. So if you've got a king snake and what a king snake looks like, it's a big, long black snake. And its belly has like almost like a checkerboard, white and white and black, white and black checkerboard uh, marks on its belly. And let it be. Now. They're pretty intimidating looking because they do get about, you know, six feet long. But for the most part, let them go. I, I do my walk every morning. I walk four miles on the, the cul-de-sac that's right behind our property here. And I saw one kind of sitting right there in the grass. I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> for a second, you know, whoa. Hey, buddy. And he's like, he's looking at me. He's like, and uh, I kind of walked around and did my lap and came back by and he was gone. So. Let them go. Let them be. Let them be. But if you're wondering, especially like in the wintertime, snakes want to get somewhere warm and you want to know if you've got a snake in your house. Well, if it smells something like this in your home, it's likely that you have a snake hiding inside of your house. Well, it's uncommon for your home to smell like food uh, unless you're whipping it up for something from the kitchen. Certain food smells can si significant can tell you potential danger if you have a snake in the, in the house. There are three different smells that you should be looking for in your house. First of all, cucumbers. Smelling it is no big deal if you're actively cutting up cucumbers for a salad or some kind of refreshing spa water. Let's go ahead and add these sentences in here to make this article a little bit longer. However, if you're not actively cooking this product and you smell it, look out. Total Reptile shares that cucumber-like odor is a specific smell that is associated with rattlesnakes and copperheads. Rattlesnakes are known to be one of the most strong, strongly smelling snakes. Their dens have been reported to smell like cucumbers and is believed uh, to be because of its hibernation odor, which releases, which is released by the rattlesnake. They go on to explain the musky smell surrounds the copperhead snake also resembles a cucumber-like smell. While some people argue that the copperheads release this smell when they are touched or threatened, scientists disagree. Scientists believe that they are more likely that copperheads has a smell because of the plants that it comes in contact with as its natural habitat. So if you smell this odor, look for snakes in the attic, basement, garage, or <laughs> you can pussy out and call someone in there <laughs> to go look for it. I'm not going to look for it. Oh, surprise. Honey, I'm dead. Honey, I'm dead. I got bit. The next thing you should smell or look for as far as an odor is a fishy smell. With this smell, we're not talking about the slight odor of like baked salmon or anything like that. Instead, the odor will be a lingerly, uh, lingering Fishy smell that does not seem to dissipate. Uh, certain snakes give off this fishy smelling odor with their musk. Some snakes known to release this odor uh, are water snakes, <clears throat> sea snakes, and garter snakes. The Florida Museum sh shares how the southern water snake shares how the water snake act acts when it is threatened. This snake will flatten their head and body, bite the attacker, and then release this foul smelling smell. Uh, from a pair of glands based at their tail. While the snake is not venomous, you should still avoid the bite altogether. It'll just piss you off. The last smell you're looking for, if you're looking for snakes in your house, is a rotten egg smell. While they, while the smell never means anything good, typically clues come from like a gas leak in their home. However, although less common, there are a potential source of uh, the smell is rotting eggs in your house, meaning you might be having a snake hiding in your home. Snake releases urine or the rotten egg sulfur-like smells uh, defense mechanism when threatened. So don't threaten them. You'll never smell. <laughs> in addition to releasing the odors when threatened, the snakes also use the odors to, to communicate with each other. For example, they use their body odor to mark territories, just like dogs and cats and stuff. So that's the three things you want to look for in your house. If, you know, when you walk into a house, if you smell cucumbers, uh, a lingering fish smell, or rotten eggs, uh, you might have a snake living in the wall. Now, this guy right here didn't smell any of these three when he went to go use the restroom in Thailand. This man right here is living out a real-life horror show. Imagine sitting on a toilet and then suddenly a vicious snake 
uh, sinking his fangs into your nutsack. That's right. <laughs> your balls are dangling down in the water, and this snake reaches up through the toilet, everyone's worst nightmare, and grabs a hold of your nutsack. This gentleman's name is uh, Th- Thanat Tangawan shared his nightmare story on social media telling the world about his unbelievable terrifying story posted the video of him grabbing the python with blood all around the floor um probably his blood not the snakes uh and according to the his sunday his sunday started off like any other sunday uh he had to go he ate a meal and then had to go poop <laughs> uh and then the merry dad waking up around 10 a.m 10 a.m waking up 10 a.m you lazy fuck <laughs> and head into the bathroom maybe he had a hard night it's saturday right he had a or it's sunday he had a hard saturday night the nat uh said he flushed the toilet to make sure that there were no unwanted surprises uh, because monsoons often bring reptiles out of the depths up into toilets and stuff, and they get caught They get caught in the sewer pipes. Then he popped a squat. Suddenly, Nat said he felt a sharp pain in his testicles and released something had sunk into his jewels. Oh, my God. He immediately spotted the culprit, and terrifying, and terrifying he found a snake, and his fangs still were dug into his scrotum. Uh, he said firmly he grabbed the snake and tried to rip it out of the toilet, but it was too strong because it was all locked in place and it was all tangled up in the in the toilet guts underneath. So here we go. Here's the video of it. If you want to see this video, if or if you don't want to see this video, I'm going to go to camera four and we can see this and we can all be friends. So here we go. This is him actually grabbing the, the snake out of the toilet that he has. So here we go. Dum, dum, dum. Here he goes. He's got him. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's big. His head's about the size of his fist. Oh, look at all the blood on the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you worried about your nutsack, buddy? Yeah, he's all trapped in the toilet. He can't get him out. He's trying to pull him out slowly. He's got him by the neck, so he can't do anything. There you go. So that's... uh, Thanat lost his uh, battle with uh, snakes biting his balls. All right, when we come back, there's a restaurant that a lot of people love that went away, and it's coming back... In a big, in a big rare form, and if you got some old uh, iPods and stuff laying around, you can turn those in for money. And wh- who will give you the best price? Well, I'll dive into that when we come back. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Deacon Live. Don't forget all the artists that you hear during the breaks and stuff. Uh, we're the only podcast that I know that give these uh, these individuals, these groups, these bands, these artists, their own individual platforms uh, to express their music, to get their music heard by more people than they probably could uh, just on their own. So we give them a, a good open platform. And all I ask of you, if you go over there to Profit Radio and uh, if you see a banner of whatever artists that you like or whatever, uh, click on that. It gives you all their social links. Make sure you show them some love as well as we give them love and show them and, and uh, showcase all their music here on the on the podcast. So that's just our way of giving back to the independent artists because we've all been there before. We've all you know tried to get a message out, try to get our music out. Uh, so we here at Deacon Live try to get that platform. We give them a platform to uh, express their feelings and stuff or express their artistic values uh, and uh, show them some love, as, as much love as we've shown them. Now, if you want to get some, let's see what it is. What it is here, <clears throat> Costco. Man, I don't know about Costco. There, they say, uh, you know, you you can you can come in, but then you know you got to have a, a membership card, which is fine. I understand that it's a membership club, um, but now they're like carding everybody that comes in like if it's me and my wife only me and my wife that's on the card or whoever's on the card can be in the store before i used to bring my dad in there uh and my uh, father-in-law and you know we would he would pay for groceries or we would pay for groceries or whatever we were buying now they they cramp down on that because you know they're losing money they're losing money somewhere <laughs> then they said you know what uh you were allowed to come in to get the the concessions, the hot dogs, the pizzas, and all that stuff, because it's in front of the checkouts. There's not really anything you can buy there. Uh, and now they say, no, they, they've done, done away with that. And now you have to have a membership card <clears throat> to get their hot dogs, which I think is bullshit in itself, because you want to, I would think it, you would want to experience experience the store and go, wow, you know, as you're eating a hot dog, you're like, God, this is really cool. Maybe we should get a membership here. You know, it's kind of like a, a free sample type deal, but or a discounted sample. But now Costco says, guess what? 
<laughs> we we are trying to be uh, we're trying to play both sides of the fence here. Costco will give you free groceries for your old electronics and here's what to do. Imagine trading in your stuff that you don't want anymore to get groceries. <clears throat> Talk about a budget-friendly swamp. Uh, that's what Costco is doing right now in, the, in its new trade-in program. <clears throat> and you don't have to become a Costco member to take advantage of it. See, this is where I have a problem. You, you, got, you can't just pick and choose wh what members get what. So let's find out a little bit more. Costco trade-in program is a fantastic opportunity for customers looking to... Oh, i got to take my shoes off again. I know. Costco trade-in customers are... Uh, the customer trade-in program, Costco's trade-in program, is a fantastic opportunity for consumers looking to um, extract value from their used electronics. Uh, let's see. So how does the program work? Costco trade-in program is affiliated by a third-party company called Phobia. You'll never step foot inside a Costco warehouse uh, throughout the whole entire process, they said. Instead of Instead, the program has been linked to Costco's website that will take your uh, that will take you to Phobia, uh, where you can select the device model, answer some questions about the current condition of the product, and get a quote for this free tra trade-in. Essentially, your assets and items uh, they assess your items online through the Costco partnership, uh, ship it for free, and if it meets the criteria, you will receive a Costco shop card. The payout can vary significantly, hinging on the customer's condition of the market uh, relevant. So here they are. You don't need a membership, but we're going to give you a membership or a, a Costco card, like a gift certificate. Now, I know, I think that's the reach around or the work around. <laughs> reach around is a different story in itself. Where if you've got a, uh, someone buys you a, a gift card for Costco's, you don't need to have a membership for the Costco gift card. And, and there's a whole bunch of like DoorDash or something like that. They get around that. So you say to yourself, what kind of devices does Costco trade in except what, what do they allow? Well, right now, currently the program accepts used Apple devices, including phones, laptops, tablets, smartwatches, Desktops, displays, media players, anything for Mac or IMAX. The models have to be from 2013 or newer. So you're like going, well, how much money do I get back? So this isn't too bad. According to Phobia's website, and when I say Phobia, it's P-H-O-B-I-O. You can get up to 1080 bucks for a used device. That's referring to specifically a used Apple laptop. For a desktop, you can get up to $1,025. For smartphones, you can get up to $750. For tablets, $450. Uh, displays, up to $400 back. For smartwatches, uh, $200 and up. And media players, you can get up to $40. Bucks. That's not too bad, but I guess there's got to be some kind of deal that they're doing with Apple products because I didn't see Android products. I didn't see like window phones or anything like that or any PC products. No, we don't want that garbage. <laughs> We just, Phobia wants all the Apple stuff. You know why? Because they're going to start their own uh, computer company. They're going to take all and strip it down and, and relabel and send it back out to the community as, as a new item. I don't know what they're doing, but it's called Phobia. Isn't that scary? Isn't that like a, being scared of something? Now, something you should not be scared of uh, is coming back. Is this family, uh, family burger friendly ice cream chain. And when I say friendly, that's exactly what's coming back. Friendlies has a deal. Uh, let's see. The ice cream chain Friendlies has dealt with its fair share of obstacles over the years, including mass restaurant closures, declining sales, and multiple bankruptcy filings. But in the good news for the nearly fans of the 90-year-old company, the chain is starting to make a comeback in 2024 with new store openings, improved sales, and multi multi-prong plan. Uh, <clears throat> and becoming relevant again. Sharif Matias, the CEO of Friendly's parent company, Briggs Holding, outlined the chain... Oh, holding company. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Outlined the chain's ambitious turnaround um, strategy in recent interview in a recent interview with uh, Restaurant Dive. One key factor of coming back, plans... Uh, revolve around the food. Friendly has overhauled its menu with unique uh, new twists on classic comfort fare to make it more relevant for modern diners. In 2022, for example, the chain introduced a cheese skirt burger 
All right, with a massive piece of fried cheese cascading off a patty, the Instagrammable menu item creates uh, something new and unique, but also tastes great. <laughs> Matthias told the publication, yeah, it tastes, it tastes great. It's, it's good. You believe me. The Knots of the Diners who dip their french fries in ice cream, Friendly's also offers a, a debut of the new Fries and Ice Cream Dipper Sunday, which comes with a scoop of vanilla ice cream drizzled with chocolate sauce and fries and a dusting of powdered sugar throughout the revamp. Uh, uh, dusting of powdered sugar. Through the revamp, it took a while uh, to accomplish this. The company is pleased with the new update menu uh, and is sure to make it come back efforts to come back hopefully victory i don't know the the fries and ice cream i mean people do the whole um was it the frosty that you get at wendy's and you dip the frosty fries and frosty i never was into that i never was into that um but if you do the fries are you going to salt the fries and then put the powdered sugar on it or are you going to just leave the fries like right out of the fryer and put the powdered sugar on it? that way it's almost like a not a potato pastry cake or something. I don't know. It'll be interesting. But anyways, so if you see them out there, if you see new buildings, new structures going up, um, I don't know if the stores are going to be as big as they were. I just know that Friendly's, uh, people just used to go there. They should just put them right by movie theaters. Um, people used to go there just to get ice cream. I don't think they actually sat down. And I, I think I've eaten there once, maybe twice, like in high school. <laughs> if it wasn't for me, they would have shut down maybe. All right, when we come back, uh, don't call this cruise ship a cruise ship. And uh, a dog eats off a man's toe and saves his life. And I'll dive into those two stories when we come back. So stick around. You'll listen to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Deacon Live. I, um, my wife and I just purchased a new vehicle. Uh, I say new vehicle. We ordered a, a truck. We've got a, a Chevy Silverado the high country series and it we um the 2500 it's got all the bells it's leather interior it's got cameras all over it but we ordered it i think back in 2022 i forget i forget it's we've had it a year but because of the whole computer chip thing uh it took them forever for them to put everything together and wait for chips to come in and we go down to the dealership and all the options and stuff he would he would hit the refresh and it would show all the different options and some would be like read out like, no, we don't have the parts for that yet. We're still waiting for that to happen. But anytime I bought a vehicle, and this is the second vehicle, I've always ordered it. Designed it the way I want. I know baller again, right? <laughs> baller. Uh, but I've always ordered it or like looked online and I'm like, I picked this out. I'm like, but you know, this is exactly what I want. I've never really gone and like kicked tires or anything like that. Anytime I've walked into a dealership, I go, this is what I want. Um, if you don't have this, I want something better. In this, but for this price, you know, I go down over the, the VIN number and everything. And they're like, oh, no, not that I did it often. I think I did it like two times, but I've always had great success by doing that. Now, this gentleman right here didn't have great success when he went into the Keeler dealership in Memphis, Tennessee. So this person right here by the name of uh, what's his name? William Hayes. He walked into Kia. He walked into Kia. Where'd he go? Let's start at the beginning. <laughs> uh, this man was a, reportedly arrested in Memphis, Tennessee, involving involving trying to trying to steal a dead person's identity and buy a couple cars to show how perversive the <laughs> fuck fuck. So this guy right here, the ultimate, you know. Uno reverse, a man steals someone's identity to buy a car in a dealership and it backfires on him. The story is chronicled by uh, TikTok Taylor Bender, and I'll show her video here in just one sec, that has gotten over 14.7 million views. On the screen capture summary, it says, you steal a dead person's identity, try to buy a car, and they trick you into thinking you really got away with it, and then the cops arrest you immediately, and you have to hand the keys back over to them. And the Daily Post reported the details of arrest on Sunday listed the suspect as William Hayes, who wanted to purchase purchase two Kia, was it Telluride, Telluride SUVs, 
and he used a fake Tennessee driver's license bearing his name of a de- bearing the name of a deceased individual. Unaware that the dealership already contacted the authorities, Hayes went through the whole entire purchasing process. The two vehicles, valued at $158,000 in total, were safely recovered. The article, oh, there's the, the thing right there. Um, Hayes has been charged with forgery, and the bond is set for $50,000. Uh, the charges against him include forgery with potential with a potential value between sixty thousand two hundred fifty thousand and attempted theft of property within the same valued range. Uh, the report draws from its Facebook post of the uh, Memphis Police Department confirming that the Daily Dot uh, that was put up on August twelfth. So now, even when I see this video, oh, I feel I hate to say it, but I feel sorry for the guy because they kind of let him on. So I'm going to switch to camera four, and here he is. Congratulations. 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 There he is standing there. Look at him. Hold on. She's so standing there. Everyone's, uh, yeah, you got it. And the guy, he, he doesn't look like he, I say, and I hear, how am I to, <laughs> to judge, you know, someone, but I will judge. He's got sloppy shirt on. His pants are too big. Um, and he's, you know, he's got the keys in his hands. Everyone's like standing around filming him. You know, Congratulations. Congratulations. Here's the keys. Congratulations. We don't do this to everyone. And now here are the police taking them away. You get your cigarettes, your menthols. Wink, wink. Her, her. Congratulations. There you go. You, you got it. All right. <laughs> did they need to do that? For the, for the most part, did they need to do that? Let's go back to me now. Isn't that kind of like rubbing salt in the wound? Hey, you know what? <laughs> we know what you did. Congratulations, sir. You don't mind if we film you for a little bit, do you? Uh, congratulations, sir. Here's your keys. You, you did it. Congratulations. You got two beautiful new vehicles. And um, here come the police department. Uh, they will have a couple words for you. Why did they even let it go through? That's the problem. Why did they let the whole entire transaction go through? Why didn't they just stop it and say, no, you can't have this and and called the police hey this guy's got a you know a, a, a license that's not his and he's trying to buy cars with it no they let him go through the whole entire process man that, that more of that, that the more that that comes out of my mouth the more shady i feel about that that car company i wouldn't go to him now because who's who's to know who's to say that you know oh we got him we got this black man yep he uh we got him thank god memphis tennessee Got to stay strong. Got to stay pride. You know all that stuff, man. It, it that was that's kind of shady in itself, man. That was that was just wrong. They could have just thrown him out, or uh, you know, caught it, got him on a lesser charge. Now he's got a felony of one hundred fifty, two hundred fifty thousand dollar, whatever, fifty thousand bond with him as well. But I digress. Uh, I'm, and, well, I actually, I'd like to hear from you about the, that story. Do you think that was fair? Do you think it was fair for him to be charged or let him go through the whole entire transaction and essentially let him steal it? Let's, let's bump that, pad that, <laughs> that charge up a little bit more. And the way you can do that is go over to profitradio.com and, uh, at the top of the page, it says leave a message for Deacon Live. I'd like to hear your response on that as well. And, but if you on this boat right here, don't call it a cruise ship. There was a time where cruise ships were actually they couldn't fill the the rooms and i think they were selling them like almost like timeshares like buy this room for you know sixty thousand dollars a year and you can ride as many cruises on this ship in itself and i think that i don't know what happened with that i think they (laughs) either they lowballed it or they didn't get any bites on it but right now this right here is a world luxury ship that travels the world full time and here's how to get on board of it because it's not a cruise ship it's an apartment complex the floating apartment complex a residential yacht per se is a holiday home that travels the globe the world a luxury liner has many descriptions but not cruise ship one of the things that's similar between the world and the cruise ship is they both float on water he says the owner of the ship if our ship was a cruise ship, there'd probably be about 150 or 1,500 passengers on it. Um, we get really busy when there's only two to 300 people on this cruise liner. The world liner, I don't want to say cruise liner. The world, I'm going to say cruise liner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The world cruise liner 
has 167 privately owned apartments ranging from 290 square foot studios to 300 or 3,200 square foot um, four bedroom residence. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> it's like the size of our home on there. Uh, Minarika and his wife bought their apartment in 2020 with plans to spend one or two months a year on the ship. However, they said now they spend up to half the year on board. Must be nice. Must be nice. We found out that we loved our community so much and the way of travel. It's very leisurely and comfortable. He says you're continuously seeing something new every day. You wake up one place and you know, go to bed in one place, wake up in another. Um, Marienka said the couple were so enamored by the onboard experience that they eventually bought a second larger apartment on the world cruise liner, keeping their first apartment for family and friends. Sure. Let's, we love this so much. Let's buy an additional home for everybody. Like many cruises, the world has uh, multiple restaurants, bars, yoga classes, gyms, two pools, medical center, and which God knows I'm, I'm very familiar with those and round the clock room service. But the uh, similarities uh, mainly end there. For starters, the ship, on this ship, the owners call many of the shots on board. It's a democratic society on board, says the residential director. Uh, they vote for things like the itinerary. They vote for refurbishing the ship, what needs to be clean, what needs to be done. They have like a well a board of directors. Oh, great. So it's like a homeowners association as well. So not only <laughs> are you an apartment on this cruise liner, and, but now you got a homeowners association where they, they tell you you can't uh, hang your towels off the balcony or something like that. Itineraries, itineraries change yearly. Uh, the schedule for 2026 has been finalized. Uh, and it says it includes stops in Antarctica, French Polynesia, Easter Island, uh, the latter of which he calls the most sought after locations in the world. The world docks. The World Cruise Liner docks in about 100 ports, 100 ports per year uh, for two to five days rather than just a few hours. We pull into port like the we pull into a port and then we stay there for three or four days. So we might not even get off the first day, but we might just go get off for dinner. Oh, fancy, fancy. So you ask yourself, well, how much is this goddamn thing? <laughs> so let's keep in mind. Where's the price at? I just saw it right here. So many of the owners, let's see who's on the ship. So many of the, the owners are North American, but we have residents from over 20 different nationalities. We have a lot of Australians on board as well, says Wong. He's the, the director of this thing. Uh, Maranika, former CEO of a large consumer electronic business, says owners have all have all had some level of financial success. Of course, uh, just that's just a fact. But what's really interesting is everybody has a great story, he says. Purchase price, here we go. Purchase price for the residents range from $2.4 million for the little 300 square foot to $15 million, a figure which doesn't include the quarterly maintenance, which can be about 10% of the purchase price annually. Oh my God. So you got to shell out a little bit more. Uh, yes, it's not a, a big typical, a big topic on board. Yes, money is not a big topic on board of the world, but it's definitely no, definitely no keeping up with the Joneses because whether you're a multimillionaire, there are plenty of billionaires on board as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Shut up. Shut up. So there's no keeping up with the Joneses because uh, whether you're a multimillionaire, there are plenty of billionaires on board as well. So you talk about your love of travel and experiences. This is probably the place to be. He said one of his friends on the ship is a 82 year old guy who lives more, than, <laughs> who who gives more than more money than I could ever, or has more money. Oh Jesus Christ! Fuck! Fuck! He says that one of his friends on the ship is an 82-year-old guy who gives more money to the charity than he could ever imagine. What do I think about that? Well, you know what? That's fine. <laughs> if you can do that, by all means, do that. Uh, when we come back, this little kid uh, jumped onto his an RV he was uh, vacationing on, speaking of vacations, and instantly died. 
as soon as he stepped on board. And what he die of, it's a weird, weird situation, and they still don't know exactly how it happened. So stick around. I'll dive into that story when we come back. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proffer Radio. I'll be right back. I used to have a bulldog. Not one. I had, a, at any given time, I had three bulldogs. And uh, I've owned a total of four in my whole entire lifetime. I, I, there's something about a bulldog. There's something about their personality. There's something about their laziness, their cuteness. I, I just kind of connect with it. I've never been one for having like a, an active dog. Oh, oh, yeah, I need attention. I need attention. I need to, oh, oh, you know, run, throw a stick, do this, do that. I've always liked the bulldogs because they're pretty much like uh, the cat, the cat version of dogs. They, they do their own thing. They're very obedient. Um, I say the cat version of dogs, but you know what I'm saying? They, they don't need you. They can live in their own little world, but they, they love you. And, uh, unconditionally, of course, all animals love you unconditionally. Um, but it's just that personality. They have a great personality and that goes with any dogs, but I just don't need that, that I need to play, run and stuff. My wife, she would love to have a big, uh, Bernese mountain dog or something like that. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's a fucking huge dog. It's as, it's as big as one of the horses. Bulldogs are a little bit smaller, you know, they're, they're and then the French bulldogs. I, I could care less about the French bulldogs. I've always liked just English bulldogs. Well, this gentleman right here, his life was saved by a, his little bulldog puppy after chewing off his toe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, look how cute he is. So this gentleman right here said, um, explain, I was sleeping on the couch when my wife walked in and shouted, Dave, the puppy's chewing your toe. My puppy had never even chewed off. <laughs> my puppy nearly chewed off my big toe. And this is Dave talking about it. Uh, he chewed it right down to the bone and cracked it off. You might be wondering why on earth this excruciating pain didn't disturb David from his nap as he was sleeping on the couch on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and that's what he was exactly concerned about. The whole saga led him quite, uh, quite the shock health revelation. Dave explained in this story why his dog was, or why he didn't feel the dog chewing on his feet. You can figure out why from there. Because all of this, I discovered that my foot was completely numb. I couldn't feel anything. After rushing himself to the uh, Adam Brooks Hospital with his mangled toes. In 2023, the former construction worker discovered that little Harvey was actually somewhat of a hero thanks to his chewing habits, chewing on his shoes, chewing on anything that he could get his teeth on. First, medics put Dave on an intravenous antibiotics to stop the, any potential infection caused by the dog's bite from spreading uh, to his bones. Before he, went under, before he underwent a CT scan to assume the damage of his fractured toe, the doctors then found out that David had had not one but two blocked arteries in his leg, and that's why his foot had gone numb. This he was informed that this that he had the risk of losing his legs if if the blood supply was not returned. Thankfully, Harley, the dog, chomped down on his foot and had come to a, the, at the exact right time uh, for them to catch this thing that he had going on. The cute floppy faced puppy had in inadvertently saved David's life by getting a bit too aggressive up on his toes. Doctor said uh, doctors were working were then working to determine whether the dad could have stents fitted uh, which would open up the arteries to allow blood flow to to return to his leg. Uh, the whole ordeal left only only left David uh, more grateful that, to have Harley the bulldog. And he probably praised the pup after saving his life. And so this guy was just sleeping on his uh, couch and, you know, dog chews on stuff. And I guess his little dog, Harley, uh, let me, I'll switch the camera for so you can see him. Oh, look at him. Look, he's a cute one. He's, uh, his, uh, his skin is that, that gray brown color and he's got brown paws and he's got a little white mask on him. Oh, look how cute he is. Little, little Harley. Save, save Papa there. And he's young looking. Well, he's a puppy, I guess. Now, this kid right here was young as well. Unfortunately, didn't see the same results. A 17-year-old fatally executed after stepping barefoot onto his camper, Ohio cops say. An Ohio teen appeared uh, to have been fatally electrocuted after stepping on a barefoot, stepping barefoot uh, uh, into a camper on a rainy, a rainy night, police said. Or day, couldn't matter. Could be the same day. Officers responded on August 18 to report an injury of a person arri arrived at the resident 
to find firefighters loading a 17-year-old uh, Olivia Bright in into chest compression machine. Uh, find firefighters loading 17-year-old Olivia Bright into a chest compression machine, according to a report. Okay, got it. Uh, the teen had burns on her right hand and was in cardiac arrest. She was taken to the local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Oh, man. Firefighters said that uh, Bright appeared to have been electrocuted after entering the camper on her family's property barefooted, noting that the scene was soaked from rain, according to the police. An investigation revealed that the camper was unplugged and had no signs of charring anywhere. According to the Toledo Edison uh, First Energy Corp, a uh, utility company called to the investigation. The camper was not energized, quote unquote, energized. The police says, all we know that the Toledo Edison cleared my power is what they said. There was no, no electricity or anything on the vehicle. We were cleared. Uh, they cleared my electrical, making sure there was no electrical faults anywhere in the house. Bright's family said that they are waiting for the coroner's report to learn exactly how the teen died. Uh, the station reported. Thoughts are family with the prayers, and the name of the girl was, uh, oh, they didn't say the name of the girl. So, what do you think happened there? Let's go back to me. What do you think happened there? So, there was nothing plugged in on the RV. There was nothing, like, uh, I don't know, do RVs have like a, like a generator battery cell somewhere? And do they hold electricity even if it's not plugged in? Do they have some kind of, uh, you know, onboard power if you're not plugged in? And so the child stepped on and probably grabbed something, wet foot, and shocked, electrocuted himself. I don't know. That's a weird story. If you have a, an opinion of how she uh, got electrocuted, uh, make sure you hit us up over at Profit Radio, P-R-O-P-H-E-T radio.com. At the top of the page, says leave a message for Deacon Live. We'd love to hear your opinion as far as how that person, that girl, died at the age of 17, electrocuted by stepping foot in their, their family's little uh, RV there. Uh, wasn't hooked up to electric or anything. I don't know what that solution is. So that's a mystery for you guys to solve for me. So get those messages in and we'll play it on the very next podcast. All right, when we come back, one little more a little segment. We'll let you get back to doing what you got to do. My name is the Deacon. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. When we come back, one more little segment. We'll let you get back to doing what you got to do. Stick around. You'll send Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. As you guys know that we live uh, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, a little town called Marshville. Uh, we bought this property with the intention of having like uh, horses. We have a horse farm, basically. Uh, we have horses, uh, cattle, dogs, chickens, goats, snakes, <laughs> dogs, cats, all that stuff here on the property. And we have a really, really small town. Now, uh, I told you about the truck that we just bought. And when you buy, when I bought my truck, uh, we bought the oil change package. You know, I don't want to have to sit here and pay full price because I think it's like 200 something dollars every time you get the oil change <clears throat> on this vehicle. Um, so we bought like the six package for like 800 bucks. So, I mean, that, work out the math on that. I don't have a calculator in front of me and I'm not a human advocate. Um, but changing your oil on a vehicle is fine. The weird part is my own, in my head, I never change the oil on anything else in the house, meaning like my... Um, my edger or my, not my edger, my, uh, lawnmower. I, I, I take them back. I do change the oil on my lawnmower, but like, uh, I've got like a pressure washer, never change the oil. Uh, growing up, I had a push mower, never change the oil, did any of that stuff. And it, it ran fine. And I'm like, Hey, if it keeps running, it keeps running, keeps going, keeps going all through my whole entire adolescent up to adulthood. I never changed the oil in my lawnmowers or my push mowers. Now I do, I do now because at the time, the lawnmowers that I was pushing was like a hundred bucks. Uh, the lawnmowers that I'm riding on now, you know, five, six thousand dollars, big zero term mowers. I want to keep these things uh, running and gunning. But this woman right here <clears throat> says she hasn't changed her oil in over two years in her car, and here's what happened to her. Of course, she's got a, a, a video, a TikTok video, but let's find out what happened. Emily recently asked TikTok users, what's the longest you've gone without changing the oil in your car? Her video has received over 159,000 views. Me personally, I think it's been about two years, she continues. Um, the head gasket is a barrier that separates the bottom of the engine from the motor and the cylinder head. Uh, the purpose is to maintain compression and seal combustion. Uh... Uh, happening to each cylinder. All right, we, we understand how 
uh, a head gasket works, or do we? The head gasket also serves as a barrier between coolant uh, channels that run through the engine block, uh, such as oils roto rotating in the assembly. If an uh, engine is overheating, one of the most common, co most common causes of a blown head gasket is uh, this can result as smoke coming out of the tailpipe, uh, a car feeling under power like it's... It's likely what Emily seems to be experiencing with her car. So let's find out what Emily has to say. Hold on, Emily. Hold on. I know. She's, oh, she's all done up for this video. And you want to see this video? We'll play it in real time right here. So here we go. Go to camera four. And make sure you follow us over. What is the longest you have gone? Okay, shut up, girl. You got your nails done. You got your eyes did. You got everything done. And make sure for every video, uh, for every podcast we do, we have a magic video. And you can see this in real time over and up. Uh, Deacon Live podcast over on YouTube. Make sure you give us a subscribe over there as well. So here you go. Let me describe her. She's got some kind of Louis Vuitton glasses on. Her hair's done. She's eyebrows are all threaded, needled, whatever they are. She's got long ass fingernails. She probably never worked a day in her life <clears throat> unless it's on her back. And here she is talking about uh, her oil change and she's clapping. She's doing the clap thing. So here we go. The longest you have gone without getting an oil change. Me personally, Mm -hmm. I think it's been about two years. Lip injections. She would change the oil in her lips more than she would change the oil in her uh, her car. Okay. Okay. So backstory. My car is busted, and I've talked to my husband, my father-in-law, my best friend's husband, some other men that I know, and they're all saying that I have a blown head gasket due to not properly taking care of my car, basically. Okay. So <clears throat> she said she talked to her husband. I don't want to say that the it's the husband's job. It's someone's job in the family to make sure that oil changes are done. Whether it's a group effort between the husband and wife. Hey, the, the check oil light or change the oil light came on. Uh, can you set up an appointment? Fine, no problem. But I don't know. What kind of husband does she have? Basically due to not getting oil mm. changes. Okay. But like, first of all, yes, there was a, a light on. But I always take that as like a suggestion. I'm like, always right. like, oh, I got time. I know this is my fault and I'm very disappointed in myself. But does your husband remind you to get your oil changed or not? Okay. Second of all. He probably doesn't care about you because look how fake you are. <laughs> I always have lights on in my car. Mm-hmm. Tell us about and it. And I am mad at myself and disappointed. But more than that, I'm like more scared because I know my husband's very up, gonna be upset. Like he is upset here, he knows. So basically what happened was two days ago, uh -huh. I went to go get Mia from school and my car started smoking. So I ran in and got my husband and he was like, oh girl, like, psh, of course it is. Go get your oil changed. And I'm like, now you tell me, why didn't you remind me? So I went and got my oil changed and as I was pulling out from the- <laughs> Cause you're an adult. You're an adult. The lights on the dashboard tell you you're an adult. Oil change place. They didn't say anything. They were like, there was a point where four of the people at Valvoline were like all surrounding the front of my car. And mm -hmm. I was like, hmm. But they didn't say anything. So whatever, as I was pulling out from getting my oil change, it was smoking, but I thought just stuff just had to like clear out of right. it. Yeah, sure girl, um, you got it. But it was driving funny. It felt like heavy. It was making a rattling noise. And I was like, I think it's more than just getting my oil change. Like there's something going on in mm -hmm. here. You gotta buy a new car. And then I just got in the car to go tanning and it is smoking like <laughs> so bad. Like I can't Priorities, right? Priorities. I can't drive it. like. I don't feel safe driving it. I don't blame you. I don't face, feel safe with you on the road. And I'm pretty sure I uh -huh. ruined my car. Yep. From being an irresponsible idiot. But I'm just a girl. Like, you, you said it. You said it. Not me. You said it. I really wish my <clears throat> husband... I love to blame other people for my problems, if you haven't noticed. I wish he would have just reminded me. Like, that light is a suggestion. Isn't it? No. Fuck. Fuck. Fix your lips. Yeah, it's literally, honestly, it might even be more than two years. Like, I cannot remember the last, I've had this car for three years. Okay, so it's three years since you've had it done. I remember uh -huh. because when I got the car, they said I got two free oil changes, uh -huh. and I only got one of the free oil changes. Okay. Uh-huh. Thinking about it. So maybe it's been three years? Yep. You're done, though. I gotta go. 
<laughs> I gotta go. I gotta call my husband. I gotta do something. Something's not right. <laughs> God almighty, girl. Please. Check your oil. You know, check it. <laughs> do something. Make a... Uh, Couples, husband, wife, you know, I don't, you know, even if the husband doesn't have any sense as far as oil, as far as when the light comes on, bring it in. Light comes on, bring it in, you know, no matter what. <laughs> no, no, you got some time. That's a, that's a warning sign. It's like a, a going through a, a traffic light, you know, uh, green, yellow. Oh, I got time. I can go through it. Yellow light because all the lights are yellow. They should all be red. They should all be red at any given time for a girl like this one. <laughs> Now, this last video I'm going to play, it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, this guy calls into a job um, where he doesn't work at, and I just thought about, like, you know, kids going back to school and parents now going back to the office and, and doing all that stuff. This guy calls in sick to a place he doesn't even work at. It's a it's an oldie but a goodie, but I, I got a big chuckle out of it again the other day when I was watching it. So if you want to watch this video, <clears throat> jump on over to YouTube and make sure you like and subscribe to us over on the YouTube channel, Deacon Live Podcast. So here we go. Let's switch back to camera four. Here we go in real time. He's waiting. He's sitting in his car. He's waiting. On hold. Hi, uh, this is Jordan calling. I just started there last week, and um, it's like, really nice and stuff and some of the boys are going out fishing tomorrow so i'm not going to be able to make it in for my shift i was just wondering if i could take like a sick day or something i'm sorry first of all your your first name was jordan jordan yeah. let's go and fishing had just started last week yeah uh so uh, i'm gonna tell you right now it's gonna be an unapproved absence um why you're too new i believe for a sick day um and well, I'm not actually. I'm not actually sick. I just need a day off to go fishing because it's so nice, and I yeah, can't. Um, I can't really. I don't want to give up the job because it's good bread for me, right? <laughs> uh, I, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but it's not a good legitimate reason to miss your shift from work. So it's going to be unapproved, and just so that you're aware. No, no, no. What do you mean? It, it, it's unapproved. He's been there a week, technically. <laughs> not really, but. It, is if he was sick would have been approved or fishing is it approved he just wanted not to work that day people do it all the time i need a mental health day especially nowadays i need a mental health day maybe this this video was before the mental health day as far as our uh, policy goes that that's probably a discipline well, what what would be a good excuse like uh, well, could you just write something down for me no i can't <laughs> i'm an assistant manager and i could be the one that has to hold you accountable for it so oh, no you're a man and, oh yeah yeah uh -huh. not a good person to ask for an excuse i'm uh, sorry and where do you work in the store electronics electronics oh so you're my associate oh guy. even worse i'm sylvia and i'm your swap leader okay so i am the manager in charge of you but you don't know who so he I is can tell you it is definitely unapproved if you do not show up for your shift so I can't go fishing? No, you can't go fishing. Can't go fishing. It's just so nice out. Yeah, that's one of the responsibilities. Are you sure you can't, you, can't do, you can't do me one? Yeah, do, no, do me a solid. I'm sorry, I can't. And, and, and just, I mean, it, it doesn't it, look very good for you. It probably won't be busy, though. <laughs> We're slow Jordan, anyways. Yeah. You're not looking very good to me right now. Can you not at all. Well, I look good. I just don't sound good. I, I'm confused. Can, am, are we FaceTime? First, Can you see it's me? It's not a very good first impression. Oh, I've met you before. You don't... I didn't know you were manager. You don't remember me? No, I, I, I may have met you at the interview process, but I mean, uh, we do a lot of no. them, so I... I <laughs> he doesn't even work the there. No. Um, so uh, I'm going to tell you at this point, if you don't show up for your shift, it is an automatic unapproved, which will be a first level written discipline oh my and I mean, within your first 90 days that is definitely not a good thing oh my how many of those do i get it, but it's not you're not you're missing the point of what i'm trying to tell you okay no he's okay. saying how many so do i get you need to be here for your shift <sighs> okay i don't want to okay, bye bye <laughs>
So, I mean, let's go back to me now. So, I mean, this guy calls into a place he doesn't even work at, and he's giving, you know, I just want to, I don't want to work today. I don't want to work today. We've all had those days. And uh, this lady, who's his manager, who doesn't even know who he is or whatever, uh, have you ever done anything like that? We'd love to hear from you. And the way you can do that is go over to Profit Radio, P R O P H E T radio.com. At the top of the page says, uh, leave a message for Deacon Live. Hit uh, record. Listen back and then send. You can be anonymous if you want. I don't care. You can say whatever you want. Uh, and we broadcast every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right out of the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina area. And uh, get those messages in. We'll play it on the very next podcast. And you can be podcast famous right alongside of us. Make sure you follow us on all your social networks. And make sure you give us a like and subscribe over on YouTube as well. All right, guys. On that note, I'm going to let you get back to doing what you got to do. My name is The Deacon saying goodnight and goodnight. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. The end. The absolute end. Écoute-moi. Uh, see ya later. Ooh.